so many survivors live in fear of judgment and retaliation and mainly live with shame. And I know because I experienced it and it was time to stop being silent. Evan Rachel Wood is known for hit films like 13. Let me say that. No, mom. And shows like Westworld. Is this really what you want? They never gave us a choice before, Teddy. But in 2018, the actress took on a new role as an activist for domestic violence and sexual assault victims, testifying twice before lawmakers about what she says was her own personal experience with abuse. He broke me down through means of starvation, sleep deprivation, and threats against my life. But at the time, you did not name the person who you said had abused you. Why? I was too scared. It was made very clear to me that there would be retaliation and to expose a person in power and who is as high profile as he is uh, clearly is a huge undertaking. On February 1st of last year, Wood publicly named her alleged abuser as Brian Warner, otherwise known as Marilyn Manson, who she says she met when she was 18 and then dated on and off for more than four years. I was like, what is this feeling? And it's this feeling of being believed. The new HBO documentary, Phoenix Rising, details her journey to naming him. He responded after you named him publicly, saying horrible distortions of reality, saying that his intimate relationships have always been entirely consensual with like-minded partners. What did you think of his response? From what I can tell, he's alluding to the fact that maybe this was just kinky sex. Brian and I did not have a BDSM relationship we did not have kinky sex. This is not a sexual preference. This is not, that's not what we're talking about here. The heavy metalist is known for his shock rock and often controversial persona. Would you say that it's a fair assessment to say that he kind of came as advertised? No, I mean, I don't think the world would have put him on such a pedestal if they really thought that his act was real. In the film, Wood describes the psychological and physical trauma she claims Manson put her through. You claim that Brian raped you, cut you, beat you, forced you to drink his blood, all without your consent. Mm -hmm. And recalls one of her several attempts to leave him. He called me 158 times and cut himself every time I didn't pick up the phone and said he was gonna kill himself. This is when people in my life started saying, you need to get a restraining order. And I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. That, that, the getting a restraining order seemed crazy to me because I was like, you're only going to make him more mad. I went back to his home to try to defuse the situation after he'd been cutting himself and threatening suicide. And I was severely punished. Wood is not the only one to come forward with sexual assault allegations against Manson. Esme Bianco, the first accuser to share her story on camera, spoke to ABC News last year and has since filed a lawsuit against him. Were you abused by Marilyn Manson? Yes, I was. How long did it take you to realize that's what was happening? Seven years after I left. It's not easy for girls like us to dig our way out. Bianco is best known for her role in the hit series Game of Thrones, but her career began as a model and a burlesque performer in London. In 2005, she was introduced to Marilyn Manson, the controversial global rock star who she idolized as a teenager. When I spoke with him for the first time, the first words out of his mouth were, I've been a fan of yours for years. Over the next four years, she says they built a friendship based on their mutual interest in art and music. He gained her trust. Then in 2009, she says Manson asked her to star in a music video he was making and flew her from London to L.A. He told me that we were going to shoot it all on flip cam so that we could do it ourselves. That was like the beginning of the nightmare. This is when she says Manson was first violent with her. It got to the stage where he wanted to shoot the finale of the video and he locked me in his bedroom and he tied me to a wooden prayer kneeler. I was half naked and he beat me with a whip and he filmed it. Bianco provided ABC News with this photo, which she says is her back marked with whiplashes taken after the incident. At any point, did you ask him to stop? No, I would never have dared to ask him to stop. Was there ever a point where you feared for your life? The entire time during that shoot. Her lawyer says Manson's treatment of Bianco, including asking her to travel across international borders, constitutes human trafficking. 
I was defrauded. I was transported from the UK to the US. I was harbored and then I was coerced into involuntary servitude and in which included sexual abuse and physical abuse. ABC News reached out to Manson and his team for comment on Bianco's specific allegations, but has not heard back. In response to her lawsuit against him, Manson has called her claims meritless, untrue, and a key component of a coordinated attack by multiple plaintiffs who are cynically and dishonestly seeking to monetize and exploit the Me Too movement. As for Evan Rachel Wood, earlier this month, Manson filed a lawsuit against Wood and an activist featured in the documentary named Il Magor, whom he calls Wood's on-again, off-again romantic partner. The complaint claims that they used the film project to recruit, coordinate, and pressure women who had been linked to Brian Warner to make false accusations of abuse against him. It also alleges, among other things, they impersonated an FBI agent in a fictitious letter claiming there was a federal investigation into Manson and that Wood and his other alleged victims were in danger. In response to the documentary, Manson's attorney released this statement to ABC News, saying in part, nothing that Evan Rachel Wood, Ilma Gore, or their hand-picked co-conspirators have said on this matter can be trusted. This is just more of the same. But then again, what else would you expect from a group who have spread falsehood after falsehood about Brian? I stand by everything that I've said about the abuse allegations. Can you establish if the claims against you are false? I don't believe I'm legally allowed to comment on any of the allegations, but I am very confident that I have the truth on my side. Our thanks to Lindsay. Part one of Phoenix Rising, Don't Fall, premieres tomorrow on HBO with part two the next night. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.